everyone now today's video is about a chapter called climate let's look into this what exactly the chapter has got for you the word climate uh, to understand this we need to understand the meaning of a certain terms which comes in this chapter like we might come across words like climate and weather so let us try to understand the difference between weather and climate now talking with climate climate is something which we calculate after seeing a few of the conditions like uh, temperature pressure wind atmospheric pressure precipitation and humidity and we decide and it is usually a sum of total of all these for a larger area we usually calculate all these for a larger area and as well as we calculate this for a longer period of time and when I say a longer period of time it involves nearly a time of or a minimum of a 30 years then we consider a particular regions climate okay with regard to weather the same elements like we observe the temperature of a region we observe the humidity precipitation wind system in that particular area but for a very smaller area and as well as for a smaller period of time say maybe a day or a week or a month the only difference that you see is the climate is usually calculated for a larger area and for a longer period of time and the time is specified with minimum of 30 years and to understand these two better we need to understand the elements of both climate and weather the elements of uh, weather and climate are same they are not different we do calculate or we do un try to understand the weather and climate with the help of these terms so it's important to know the meaning of these words so first of all let me tell you the definition of temperature temperature is nothing but a state of heat or cold something that tells us whether it is heat or cold we call it as a temperature now with regard to climate or with regard to weather when we are talking about i'm specifically talking about atmospheric temperature i'm not talking about the temperature of uh, any other thing but i'm particularly talking about the atmospheric temperature okay so something that tells us whether something is heat or cold a state of heat or coldness is called as temperature so we take the temperature and we try to understand whether it is hot or whether it is cold so this is one important element the next one is also the atmospheric pressure i'm talking about atmospheric is nothing but something with this like you know you all know well the earth is surrounded by a layer of gases which we call it as an atmosphere so the atmospheric temperature atmospheric pressure are the important elements in calculating the weather and climate of a particular region so here atmospheric pressure is nothing but the pressure exerted by the atmosphere this atmosphere exerts either you know some high pressure or a low pressure it depends upon the temperature it may sometimes exerts a low or a high pressure so atmospheric pressure based on this we can decide the weather and climate of a particular region the third thing is wind the wind system we are going to see in this chapter the wind system around the world what exactly and how the winds are going to operate how the wind system is functioning uh, with regard to the world and with regard to particularly in the case of uh, India Indian subcontinent how are the winds going to work whether they are bringing up rainfalls whether they are causing uh, cyclones all such kind of things we are going to see and you all know well wind is something um, that blows horizontal to the earth surface the air or the wind that blows to the horizontal to the earth surface we usually call it as wind the next important element is humidity what is humidity a humidity is nothing but the invisible amount of water vapor 
something that we cannot see. It is not visible to the naked eye. That kind of uh, uh, water vapor we consider here as humidity. So based on that, we can fix the weather and climate of a particular region or any part of the region. The next one, or the important element is precipitation. Precipitation, uh, you all know well, if uh, the rain falls in the form of uh, a water, we call it as the rain or a rainfall. You know, when it precipitates in the form of uh, water, we call it as the rain. And when it precipitates in the form of a snow, we call it as a snowfall. And if it precipitates in the form of a hail, it's called as the hailstorm. So all these factors all together will con confine or will detail what is the weather out there and how is the climate of a particular region. Hope you would have understood that how these elements are important for us to fix the weather and climate of the region. Right, on the basis of uh, all the elements of uh, weather and climate, we can usually classify or we can usually divide the year into number of seasons. Like the year can be divided as the summer season, the winter and the rainy. We will see in specific when I go deep into the chapter and I'll give you the clean explanation of that and particularly we'll see how the season's formation is usually taking place. Now coming with regard to the climate of India, it is described as that India's climate is a monsoonal type 1. The word monsoon is added up here. Why the word monsoon has been derived from where it has been taken, let us see. So the word monsoon, it has been taken from the Arabic language from the word mausam, which means season. The word monsoon has been taken up from the Arabic word mausam, which means season and it refers to particularly blowing of winds. Now you need to notice this one important aspect that I'm mentioning. It usually refers to the blowing of the winds. So winds are going to play an important and vital role in the climate of our, our country. So how are they are playing an important role? Just we need to know a little bit of story behind this. We need to talk uh, how this unique characteristic has been uh, playing an important role in the climate of our country and why it has been mentioned as a monsoonal type. Let us go back in the ancient times where the Arab travelers who are coming from the Gulf, who are coming from the Arab countries to trade to India, particularly to purchase the raw material. You all know well, India in ancient times was a golden bird considered or it was called as the golden bird because it was rich in natural resources. It was rich with plenty of resources. So to buy those, the traders used to come. And in ancient times, all these tra travelers used to travel with the help of, uh, you know, boats, which are usually moving up without any motors, without any, you know, latest technology. They were tied up with the, uh, you know, with the, with the cloth, and those cloths used to push those uh, boats and they used to reach through waters to the Indian oceans. And, and usually the path was through waters and they used, to, they used to reach the coastal regions of South India. And after coming here, they used to stay for a while and waited till the winds are reversing. So they saw that these winds are usually moving up in this direction. So they used to travel towards India so we can usually categorize the directions as you all know well, you know, into four cardinal points. Usually we, we all know that there are four cardinal points, east, west, north and south. And apart from that, we can also divide into uh, another four like this as the northeast, this as the southeast and this as the southwest and this as the northwest. So altogether eight cardinal points. So what you see here is these arrows representing the blowing of the winds, particularly from the month of June. Point to be noted, 
that the directions of the winds are usually from the southwest moving up towards the peninsula India starting up from the month of June they are moving towards India like this originating in the southwest of our country and then they continue to blow like this from June to September and the Arab traders who were traveling in this they noticed that the winds are moving up in this direction for about three months they used to stay here purchase the material remain here for a while and they used to wait till the winds favor them to go back to their regions and winds used to reverse also they used to come back again from the northeast blowing away from this country back and and the arab traders used to go back to their provinces when the winds are reversing from the month of october to almost december so thereby the reversal of the winds where you all know well i have already said you the word monsoon is derived from the arabic word mausam which refers to the blowing of the winds so the blowing of the winds was first noticed by those arab traders so very important characteristic that they have noted in terms of uh, you know in terms of the blowing of the winds now this winds which are blowing up from uh, southwest and northeast directions are majorly responsible for dividing the year here in india into different seasons so i'll help you out in understanding why these winds are actually originating from the southwest and moving up towards into india particularly from the month of june to september and they are reversing back in the october uh, you know reversing back in the northeast direction from the month of october to december i'll give you a clean detail of that now based on uh, the the elements of weather and climate here what we can do is that we can divide the year in four seasons particularly with regard to india we have got four seasons like the summer season i've divided the second one as the southwest monsoon season the third as the northeast monsoon season and winter season summer and winter you can you can logically you can understand and most of them they know that what is summer and winter and maybe in particular that i have returned with southwest monsoon season and northeast monsoon season let us try to understand that as i told you that the word monsoon has been particularly taken up here looking at uh, and referring at the blowing of the winds based on that which was identified by the arab traders here in india so what happens in summer we all know well summer here starts somewhere in the mid march to almost april and it continues till may and by it reaches to the month of may the temperatures across the country reaches about 40 degrees celsius of course when we talk about uh, the temperature precipitation and all that you know different aspects are there which are you know recording different temperatures in different regions and different uh, precipitations in different parts of the country but let's not go into that and let's talk particularly with these seasons and particularly referring to monsoons here in india so in the month of may usually what happens here in the northern india in the northern parts the temperature goes too high so high that the temperature goes you know 40 and 45 plus it makes so hell out here that summer it goes on increasing and then you all know well i i was just telling you one of the elements of uh, you know weather and climate with regard to atmospheric temperature now we need to understand that atmospheric temperature is inversely proportional to atmospheric pressure i hope you all remember what is atmospheric temperature and what is atmospheric pressure these two are actually inversely proportional to each other they are not same they are quite opposite in their nature when temperatures are usually high then the pressure will be low they are always inversely proportional when temperatures are low then the pressure is high and it is very common in them that wherever there is a low pressure this atmospheric low pressure area attracts the winds 
from the adjacent high pressure areas. So as I was telling you here in summer in the northern part of the country as the temperature increases as the temperatures are high in this area there will be a formation of a low pressure a low atmospheric pressure is there so what is atmospheric temperature what is atmospheric pressure hope you all know that and maybe possibly as I further go into the explanation I will definitely give you a detailing of this atmospheric pressure as well so usually here high temperatures are associated with the low pressure during the summer and you all know well we are you know in the peninsula of India we are surrounded with the waters with Bay of Bengal Indian Ocean and as well as with the Arabian Sea now in summer when the northern India is associated with the low pressure area there in the Indian Ocean it will be having a high pressure area and the general behavior of these winds is that the low pressure area attracts the winds from high pressure areas this is how the wind system actually works this is how the Arab traders identified the reason why the winds are blowing from southwest region is that during summer when there is a low pressure here the winds are attracted from high pressure areas so the winds will start moving up they get attracted and will start moving up they usually move from the southwest direction from the Arabian Sea the winds which are there in the Indian Ocean drags and pulls the winds from the Arabian Sea and from the Bay of Bengal and they move towards the peninsula India and when they are blowing up over the water they usually are moisturized they carry moisture in them and as soon as they touch the hot land here in the peninsula India or the entire country they start giving rainfall and this happens in the very first week of the June or very first of the June it starts like this so these kind of winds once they reach to the land and they start giving rainfall we call this as the monsoon break or monsoon burst the first rainfalls when they give in Kerala and then with the first of June they start moving up gradually one by one covering the South India moving towards east and then towards west so usually the winds are traveling like this from June till the month of September India receives the maximum amount of rainfall during this season except one unique uh, you know unique uh, behavior of these winds that is the Coromandel coast will not receive rainfall this area except this Coromandel coast the entire re country receives a plenty of rainfall and this behavior continues uh, from the month of June to September the winds keep on moving from you know high pressure area to a low pressure area this happens and the first rains once they started up giving here in Andhra Pradesh they are referred to be as mango showers mango showers why because the first rain will help the mangoes in getting ripened so they, they get ripened with the first rainfall so thereby they are considered to be as the mango showers so they continue they keep on giving rainfalls they are sometimes associated by the westerly jet streams and easterly jet streams uh, even uh, as I go further into the video I'll be definitely talking about what are these uh, westerly jet streams and easterly jet streams even I'll talk about them also now here as they continue to do like this from the month of June to September they the the scenario is now reversed what happens is that the low pressure area now gets converted into a high pressure area and a high pressure area gets converted to a low pressure area by the month of September or by the end of September the scenario has got reversed now in the month of October now all the winds have gone that side now October usually we experience a little bit of uh, you know heat and humidity 
why is that so and what it is in geographical sense so october heat is nothing but in the month of october usually what happens is that as all the winds have gone that side the month of october is marked up with the clear skies there will be no clouds and as the land has received a plenty of rainfall the land gets wet so a radiation received to this wet land will cause some kind of humidity and thereby we experience some sort of heat luckily we we may receive due to depressions in the bay of bengal and arabian sea we may receive the rainfalls but october is a month which is marked up with some sort of heat and it is referred in the geographical sense as october heat now when after the month of this october usually the winds will start reversing the winds will be start like you know as i said the scenario is reversed a high pressure area now low pressure has got converted to a high pressure area and a high pressure area has got converted to a low pressure area so winds will get attracted from a high pressure areas to low pressure area the low pressure area will attract the winds from the adjacent high pressure area so thereby the winds will start reversing back and when they are reversing back from the northeast direction as they are originating from there they might give some kind of rainfall because most of the rains are received during the southwest monsoons a little bit of rainfall might be received if they are associated with the cyclonic depressions by here and there so thereby the country might receive evenly or unevenly certainly or uncertainly some kind of rainfalls but the coromandel course which did not receive the rains during the southwest monsoons now when the winds are reversing now when the monsoons are retreating they gave winter rainfall to coromandel coast they receive a plenty of rainfall in the month of you know october no, uh, sorry november october and as well as in in the month of december as well they receive a winter rainfall so this happens in the month of december and this is how the southwest monsoons and the northeast monsoons are related and soon after the december you all know well we experience with the winter season which continues from january december january and february and mostly by the month of march again the seasonal cycle will continue hope you would have understood the formation of the seasons here now in the formation of these seasons and other factors i'll be helping out in detail once we go into this